want to talk a little bit about getting maximum sustain out of your typical Gibson guitar. Uh, this is the uh, this is the modern Gibson guitar you get uh, at the local music store. Uh, this one is a, a five or six year old model that I picked up used recently. And uh, what you want to do with these guitars is uh, find any uh, problem areas that uh, might rob a little sustain from the tone of the guitar and uh, fix that so that the uh, sound is fixed at the source. Anything you pick up at the source uh, will provide lots of uh, benefits uh, as you amplify the guitar. So uh, what I look at typically doing is, uh, some people may not be aware of this, but ever since 1970 Gibson has used a 300k volume pot for their volume control. The pre-1970 value was 500k. Um, so what I do is I go out and I buy the uh, the aftermarket 500k pots. Uh, the other item I pick up is a aftermarket uh, aluminum tailpiece and uh, that will substitute right on here when you change strings but sonically you can already hear even through the plastic that it rings a lot differently. Um, I like to pull out the uh, Gibson ceramic disc caps value O2 uh, in in some cases I change the value but I always try and use something like a uh, paper and oil cap which is what they used in the 50s again that changes the EQ response of the pickup ever so slightly but puts it more in the ballpark of those recordings we're all familiar with uh, the final step of the uh, the project is uh, probably the most uh, scary and involved for most people and that is to extract the brass studs that hold the uh, uh, the bridge up uh, which is, they were only used on these ABR bridges but uh, extract the short brass studs and I go to uh, Home Depot or one of those places buy some matching screws cut the head off the screw and create longer studs uh, what you'll find uh, use two nuts like this butted up against each other and tightened to extract the old stud. Once you extract it, if you take something suitable for measuring depth, you'll find that actually below below the original stud insert point, you'll find that there's an air gap into the body. And what you can do is you can then measure the total height you need and from that reference point cut your cut your new screw to the exact height you need then using your uh, double nut technique screw this all the way into the body until it bottoms out um, against the wood. Uh, the other benefit you pick up is the material you choose for these new screws would be stainless steel uh, as opposed to brass and it's a slightly brighter sound. Uh, those basic mods will make the guitar sustain quite a bit more and the final step of the puzzle or the final piece if you're really uh, interested in spending some dough is to go out and find some super high-end uh, aftermarket pickups or original PAFs to uh, put in the guitar and uh, just because of the construction method of the premium pickups they usually sustain quite a bit more and allow you to, with those small changes, pick up every ounce of signal you can draw out of the guitar for, uh... there we go. So here's our guitar and this is an old pair piece off a pair of jeans. We're going to use this uh, rag. pull up the volume pot without uh, marking the surface of the guitar. Okay, so the first thing I do when I pull out a pair of pots is actually measure them because you'd be surprised at what you find. So this guy is 493k and this guy is 
467. So there we go. Shows you the difference between two different pots. Uh, if I was in a grumpy mood, I might not even use this one. But I probably will use this one for the lead position since that pickup tends to punch out a little more and need a little more, a little less clarity. In the old days I would have been really picky and thrown that pot out, but don't worry about that stuff as much as I used to. One thing I definitely do, these are, uh, interesting, battery just died there. Uh, these are 500k resistors, and what I do do is actually tie them around the volume control so that the taper changes. Give me a second, I'll show you how that works. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this pot. Here comes the cat. Say hi, cat. This is Dingus. Smartest cat in the world. He wants to help with this guitar. Sit down, Dingus. Okay, what we do is we take the pot, and the first thing we do is we fold the tab over so that when we solder that, that'll make a good ground. Second thing we do is we take a 500K resistor and we wrap it around the two hot lugs, the hot and the middle lug on the pot. Hopefully you can see how that works. Hopefully that's clear enough. We're just going to apply a little tiny bit of solder there and then trim these leads and that leaves our holes open for all our hardware. What this does is it makes does two things. It makes the taper of the pot much faster for quicker volume swells, and it also uh, makes the tone a little bit richer um, and beefier because it's in the resistor is in parallel with the carbon strip inside the potentiometer. So what you'll see is that when our pot is full up, It has the original 500K resistance, but as soon as we turn it slightly, uh, the taper leans more towards the, the signal side of things. You're not eating that, are you? Don't eat that. Stop that. <laughs> Can heat the work. The solder should flow. There it goes, flowing. That's what we want. Again, we want flowing. There it goes. It runs on its own. Didn't need just enough like that. Now we take our wire cutters and clean all that up. stuff out so we don't scratch our guitar. So there we go, we have two pots ready to go, replacement volume pots ready to go into the guitar.